Welcome to Tech Tips again. Today we're going to talk about ASTM F1869 versus ASTM F2170. These tests are used often to measure moisture in concrete, but they're two totally different tests and there's no correlation between the two. ASTM F1869 was originally invented by the rubber floor companies in the early 1950s and it was there to find out how much moisture is coming out of the slab. It uses anhydrous calcium chloride to measure that as a weight gain of moisture brought in under a bubble and we're going to examine that closely in a moment. ASTM F2170 uses an in situ probe which is placed down into the concrete to measure the relative humidity of the concrete. Two totally different things, as I said, no correlation. Both can help to shape uh, a picture of what that concrete slab is really like from top to bottom. To conduct ASTM F1869, you need this housing along with the anhydrous calcium chloride and a scale. Now, it's important when you pull this out of its disc to weigh it. Even though the manufacturer has already marked a weight, it's important to make sure that it hasn't picked up any weight gain, but also to make sure that your scale is reading the same. The other important thing is, if you're going to weigh it with the tape, the black tape that's around it, make sure at the end of the test that you also include the weight of that tape so you don't skew the test. We start by grinding a 20 by 20 section of the concrete to remove all the coating and any dirt and debris and get down to a nice open section of concrete. We then take this uh, calcium chloride test, we weigh it, we place it in this area, and then we cover it with a dome so that you can get a nice overall view of this area that you're going to be coating. Next we take the anhydrous calcium chloride test that we know the weight of and we take the lid off and we place it on the concrete. Now it's going vertical so I'm not going to do that now but I'm going to show you. So imagine this lid is off and I usually put it underneath it. Then we take this adhesive off of here and we stick the whole thing onto the floor and that this makes up one test. Now the test requires three tests for the first thousand square feet and one test for every thousand square feet after that. It's really important that you note where these tests go and document the readings of each area. Because finding a really high area could indicate a burst pipe or a wet condition in part of the building, but not in the other part of the, of the area you're going to coat. After 60 to 72 hours, when it's time to go retrieve your test, you gotta make sure you note the time that's elapsed from placing the test and you need to document that both on the lid and preferably on a spreadsheet. And then you take this, you put the lid back on and the tape so that it's in the same condition it was when you pre-weighed it. And using the same scale, you weigh it again. And on the lid and on your spreadsheet, you calculate the new weight. That now is information that is needed with the time to be fed into a calculation to determine how many pounds per thousand square feet per hour exist at that location. So ASTM F2170 is a totally different test. And my drawing is different here. Now we're at an at a elevation looking you know, across the, the slab this way instead of down on it. And the first thing we do in this test is we drill a three quarter inch hole to 40% of the slab depth if curing from one side only. Now this is slab on grade for our example. If it was curing from both sides, like an elevated pan deck, you would only go to the 20% depth. Most of this work that we do seems to be on slab on grade, so I'm going to focus on the 40% slab depth right now. Rapid RH does a nice job with, with uh, providing a guide which tells you if the slab is 4 inches thick, this is how deep you drill the hole with your 3 quarter inch diameter drill bit. So also the probes are designed for four inch slabs, which is the most common slab we see. So after we drill the hole, the next step is to vacuum out the hole to make sure that all the debris is out of it. After we've done that, we then insert the probe into the hole and we cover it and we have to wait for it to equilibrate. So once we put the probe in the hole and put the cap on it, we need to leave it there for 72 hours to equilibrate. 
After that, we can start taking readings. Remember that with this test, it's required to do three probes for the first thousand feet and one probe for each thousand feet after that. It's important also to leave a map where you left your, your probes so that one, you can find them, and two, you can document the readings, uh, both temperature and relative humidity in each test spot. So let's close this section out by taking a look at how these differ and where they're the same. First of all, ASTM F8069, it measures the top, many experts say, only the top half inch of the concrete. So it's a, it's a view of what's at the top coming out, where ASTM 21, F2170 measures the RH and temperature within the concrete, and you can actually vary the depth to get a snapshot of where the concrete is most moist, you know, how does the bottom differ from the top, which is a nice feature that the calcium chloride test is less expensive. Typically nine to 10 bucks, you get a kit. The probes are more expensive, typically a little over $20 per test, and the kit is, is around, I think it's around $600. One result per test. When you cut through that top or remove that top and weigh it, that's it, test over, do your calculation. With the in situ probes, you can leave them in the concrete and actually come back and take another read to see if, if the relative humidity is increasing or decreasing, which is a nice feature. Both tests need the building to be in the same basic environment that it's going to be operating in, which is really hard on a new construction site. The tests both require that a hygrometer is used to document the changes in temperature and relative humidity if the building is not in the operating condition. Now, many experts believe that the RH and situ probes are less susceptible to that condition than the calcium chloride test because it's inside the concrete, it gets a little bit of a buffer from the changes in temperature. Both of these are a snapshot in time, and that's really important because you can take a test and it can show that it's only 50% RH at 40% slab depth, and a year later come back and it might be at 100. So without a a, negative, a positive side vapor barrier under the slab, you run the risk of moisture getting back under that slab and changing the readings. So these things are, are steps that can be taken to protect yourself, to do a, a good job for your customer. And for more information, read ASTM F710 as a good overall view of how to use these with other testing devices in conjunction to get the best snapshot of that concrete slab before you coat it. These two tests have some things in common. One is that they're supposed to be done in an acclimated environment. That means windows are in, doors are shut, HVAC is running. If this can't be accomplished, you need to have a hygrometer during the testing to, to validate the temperature and relative humidity during the tests, and then you can draw a comparison between your test results and the hygrometer readings. The other thing that's similar is they're both a snapshot uh, of the test results as to when they were taken. So they're taken today, they gave me this reading, but there's nothing that guarantees that the reading in three weeks will be the same. And that's a tough one, and that's for another time to discuss positive side vapor barriers and why they're so important to long-term coating performance life. If you have questions about this video or any technical question, feel free to reach out to me at cjobrien at polymernation.com.